Okay, so going back to what you studied in the Pogel exercise that we worked on in class before we left, you should be able to write down the electron configuration and an orbital block diagram for boron. And so I'm gonna give you a minute to do that on your own. So pause the video, do it on your own. Okay, coming back, you should have written down boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1 for the electron configuration. And the way we represent that as an orbital block diagram is we draw a box for each orbital. And when we have a subshell that has more than one orbital in it, we draw a series of the right number of connected boxes. If you remember, a P subshell has three orbitals in it. There are three possible values of the M sub L quantum number, so there are three possible orbitals. I told you, you don't need to know which M sub L number goes with which, and that's true. You just need to know that there are three, so you fill these things in the appropriate way. And so boron, we would write that this is the 1s orbital, this is the 2s orbital, and this is the 2p shell consisting of three orbitals. And when we fill this information into the orbital block diagram, we simply put in the arrows, remembering that you can only have one up arrow and one down arrow in each box. The convention is that you add the up arrows first, it's not really important, except that everybody does it that way, and somebody might be confused if you decide to be weird and put the down arrow first. Okay, so 1s2 goes in like that. I imagine you can do 2s2 as well. And class is over. Okay, just kidding. Um, and 2p1 we would put in as a single up arrow. Okay, so now... The Aufbau principle, I kind of jumped into the middle here, and you know, if you're building it up from hydrogen, we would have had to go through four elements before it to get to boron. Boron is atomic number five. But now we can see how we move on from boron to get to carbon, okay? And so we would go, carbon would add one electron, okay? So we would go from boron, to carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, and now the tricky thing, the thing where some people sometimes trip up here, is that Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity that was in your Pogel exercise tells you that you maximize the number of arrows that are unpaired before you start pairing them. So when we're adding into this p subshell, we're gonna add the second P electron for carbon into this box and we're going to show it as unpaired rather than the wrong answer which would be to pair it up. Experimentally we know that the lowest energy comes from the configuration that has those two electrons unpaired and since nature always likes to assume the lowest energy configuration that's going to be our driving force. So we have now built up the configuration of carbon by starting at boron and adding one electron. And that's the alpha principle in a nutshell. The entire structure of the periodic table is based on this principle. And that means that you can glance at the periodic table once you get used to this idea and simply write down the correct electron configuration for an element. We'll get there, we're not there now. Okay, so next after carbon, comes nitrogen, nitrogen would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, and we would add the third electron unpaired in the remaining available orbital, okay? So now we've got a single electron in each one of our orbital boxes, so the next element would be O, and so we're gonna add one more electron to get to 2p4. Now we don't have any space to put another up arrow, so that means it's gonna go as a down arrow. 
So this is how we can apply the Aufbau principle and draw both the electron configurations and the orbital block diagrams that we need to do in order to um, uh, correctly represent the electron configurations of all the atoms on the periodic table. At this point, I want you to pause the video and I want you in your notebook to write down all of the electron configurations and orbital block diagrams uh, for the elements one through 10. So that'll get you up to neon and then we'll go on to the next subtopic. Okay.